Logan Reese here with a couple of our wonderful athletic trainers. Of course, Miss Sandy, our head athletic trainer, and Kristen as well. So we're, we're f blessed and Emmanuel to have, what is it, six full-time trainers on staff? Five next year. Five, five next year, five full-time trainers. Uh, so could you just give us a brief overview of what, what sports are covered by what trainers? I know there's, there's a lot of sports teams and a lot of trainers, but maybe just run through a couple of them. Sure, so yeah, there is a lot. Um, of sports, so we, we can't meet the demand of every sport to give them their own individual trainer because it's just impossible. Um, we probably have to have, what, 11 trainers? So um, I pretty much take a lot of the um, sports that the NCAA and our conference, Conference Carolina, really doesn't mandate traveling because they're Class C, they're not contact, and none of the schools in the conference can really travel those sports. So most head trainers take those. And I really enjoy endurance sports. So I'm, I do um, the men and women's swim team, cross country, track. Um, next year I will also do beach volleyball and I will also um, be involved with tennis, um, along with Ashlyn helping me with tennis as well. Ashlyn Loudermilk does men and women's basketball and women's soccer. And then she comes in in the spring and helps with that override of tennis because we have so many sports in the spring. We're heavily, heavily loaded in the spring. Um, Jack heads up men and women's across. Griffin heads up men and women's wrestling. And he does a lot of the CSCS for our teams who want a certified conditioning, conditioning and strength coach. So Griffin comes in also and heads up the strength and conditioning for men and women's wrestling, men and women's lacrosse. I think he works with tennis as well. Um, I know he worked with cross country last year, which was good. And just any coach that wants him to write programs or help them with the certified strength and conditioning coach, he also does that. Um, Kristen heads up men and women's soft, I mean men's baseball and women's softball. <laughs> <laughs> and then she also just floats everywhere. I mean, she's, also our SAC rep, which is takes another part of her job, but she also just heads up a lot of other responsibilities where we need, when we need, need it. Um, a new trainer coming in called Katherine Jones will be heading up women's volleyball, um, acrobats and tumbling, and men's volleyball. And I think we covered everything. We kind of all take care of the non-NCA sports bowling, which women is in CA, but bowling, archery, um, gosh, what else? Clay target. Clay target. Bass fishing. Bass fishing. Uh, we, we all, those are very minimum. We don't see many of those, mainly just more than Hope, Hopefully there aren't too many clay target <laughs> injuries. <'cause> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while, the type of injury I'm thinking of in a shooting sport is probably good. something that's not very easy to treat. And then I'll, I'll also work with golf. I forgot. With Logan sitting here beside forgot me. Forgot about this. I didn't forget about golf. I love golf. Covered y'all's home tournament at Katichi. Um, but, you know, golf's another sport that usually um, those injuries can be very minimum or overuse. So, yeah, I think we covered everything. Did we cover every sport? Uh, Jack will pick up women's soccer. That's right. How did I leave out women's soccer? <laughs> I mean, men's soccer. Right. Yeah, yeah. men's soccer. Because Ashlyn does women, mm -hmm. and Jack will do the men. I'll pick up the men. So, Kristen, what led you to getting into athletic training? Um, I was always involved in sports, and then I just wanted to stay involved. And so, not many options. I was thinking about teaching, but I don't think I could teach high schoolers. So, then athletic training dropped in my lap, <laughs> but now I'm here. Fair enough. So, how long have both of you been at Emmanuel? Going into my fifth year. And I think I'm starting my 12th. Awesome. So came, I came on in January 2011. So what's your favorite part about working here? I think my favorite part about Emmanuel is the family environment, the closeness, the unity um, of just the entire athletic staff and, and even with our faculty. Um, I think we, we just kind of have a great, great community minded. It's, it's the favorite part about the job, I think. So what does a day in the life of an athletic trainer look like, Kristen? I know in the spring you spend about <laughs> 50 days on the road, but what's a day in the life like? 
I don't, it normally starts out not too bad. So we'll get in and we might have like a few scattered rehabs here and there. Um, when pre-practice hits is when it gets crazy because every single team on campus is coming in here to try to get stretched or taped or try to get out of practice, something. Um, and then for the spring, spring is very crazy because there's so many sports. So a lot of us are on the road, but, and then you have your travel days where you're on the road, but it's a very hectic day. Not a lot of downtime. What's the what's the worst injury you guys saw this year? Um, I wouldn't say the worst injury because um, we we see so many. Of course, an ACL is never a fun for an athlete to experience. We we had we had we had I don't know four or five of those, um, that, and those are long injuries because we see them from the time they're hurt to the time they get cleared, which is six to nine months they're with us. So those are the time when you can really grow and develop an athlete outside of the sport, because I always tell the athlete, you're always one major injury away from being a student and not a student athlete. So that's a time when we can really help them mentally, spiritually, emotionally. Um, we had a, a, a pretty hard gen med situation uh, with a uh, pneumothorax collapse lung that ended up having my, I, I'm really put a shout out to Jack um, and Ashlyn who were here that day that he walked in and could have saved his life. Um, just something you don't see ever much. And they nailed it and got him to the ER right away. And he ended up seven days later with a major surgery. So shout out to just a staff that knows more than just orthopedic related injuries. It's also um, that was a that was a really tough gen med to figure out, um, and I'm not sure many athletic trainers fresh out of school would even figure that one out. And so I was real proud of Jack for really stepping up, and he nailed that one. Um, and then Ashlyn was also right there and um, has a lot. She had, they both have a lot of ENT experiences, so that was good. But yeah, and going back to Kristen about the normal life of an athletic trainer. For us, there's different months that are just, you know, you're just, you just have to really work hard with work-life balance. October is one of those months when 31 days in October is 31 days of October, seven days a week. Because you've got your winter sports starting and then you are also right in the peak of your fall sports. Um, and then February is another just, I would say February, March into April is also crazy because again, you've got your spring sports now at their peak, but your winter sports are not through. Um, so you're trying to manage finishing up winter sports, which if you have if you have a really really good winter sport that goes way into conference play, into post play, it could be you know mid March, and then we're we're full fledged into all the spring sports, which. There's a lot. I think there's 12. There's, um, there's only, what, four or five that aren't spring sports? Right. So spring's tough. So I would say October um, is, is really rough. February, March, going into April to about late April. You, you just, you know, you just kind of, you really count on each other <laughs> and motivate each other and pick each other up. And um, I try my best to do really good at work-life balance. So they're not putting in that, you know, 60 hour a week and just getting high burnout. Like you got to take a mental health day. You've got to take a day to get away from your sport. And, you know, and that's hard for an athletic trainer because you can really get attached and you can really get, um, it's just hard to, 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 to step away. But I really encourage during those months that everybody on staff, you, you have to take some time. You have to take a long weekend or you have to take some Sometimes so that, that burnout doesn't just slap you in the face and, you know, now you're ready to move on and find another career path. <laughs> so, Kristen, what, what, what type of injury irritates you the most? Like something that's completely avoidable or something stupid? Like what, what gets on your nerves when athletes come to you? Something they could prevent? Um, I would say most of the time any stupid injury we see typically involves the ankle. And they were just doing something stupid and they sprained their ankle and then they come in here. Um, 
but or outside <laughs> of the sport. Yeah, anything outside of the sport. <laughs> like the guy running from the dog back here. <laughs> He was just trying to run for his life. Yeah, right? He was just trying to run for his life. But um, I would say, like, really anything that's outside of their sport where they don't want to tell me the background of why it happened, then I'm irritated because I know that they were doing something they probably shouldn't have been doing. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Makes a lot of sense. Uh, if if you could work for as a trainer for a professional sports team, what team would it be? Uh, the Atlanta Braves. The Atlanta, what about you? <laughs> a tough one um that's a tough question i've worked every sport you can work and it's crazy to say that i miss football um i worked football for probably 20 years and it's just the hype of football is pretty cool but i mean obviously i like golf i love you know the hip injury in the back and uh, probably professional golf nice nice <laughs> i like where i like where you're going with this yeah i might have to hit, i might have to hit up professional golf and just kind of <laughs> travel that life that that golfers have be a pga tour trainer exactly. they, they have whole they have whole trailers yeah, that do. travel and with them i would say that's probably a really I, I worked with some professional golf when i was a trainer in greenville south carolina and, you know you get treated really well and it's, it's, the pay is really good <laughs> um yeah and, the, and golf is extremely sport specific to the tee there's not much else you can say but i like all sports yeah, so do y'all think you could tape someone up blindfolded? Absolutely. Probably. What's the, what's the most difficult tape job? Is it the, which, which body part's the most complicated? Or are you guys just pros at everything? It's all easy. <laughs> I mean, I would tape say is a big part of what we do, so I don't think taping's really difficult. Learning, probably the angle yeah. is the hardest to learn because it's all about angles. It's a major angle, right. but once you get it down, it's not. And I think the longer you stay in the training, the professional athletic training, and you just learn that basic tape job for ankle, knee, elbow, mm -hmm. turf toe, whatever, then you start to you start to just get really creative, and you you kind of develop your own style too, depending on experience and how long you've been in it and what the athlete needs. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're really good at that. I mean, I've seen Kristen do some stuff with softball and baseball. I'm like, wow, that's pretty good. Like, I, you know. I would never have thought of that for a shoulder or scapula or anything. And now that KT tape is just, you know, every athlete's favorite type of tape, thanks to the Olympics making that so popular with women's volleyball and swim, um, you can get really creative with some KT tape, you know, and some power flex tape. Yep. You can get creative. I would agree. I, don't, I think if you got every AT in the world together and told them to tape an ankle, every single one of them would do it completely different. Right. Like nobody's ever going to do it the same. Once you get to learn, you find your own way and right. it's totally different. And, uh, and it's sport specific. Soccer players like low ankle tape. Mm -hmm. I'm not to feel the ball. Basketball, you need to go high because major injury in basketball is high ankle sprain. Um, uh, Christy can elaborate a little bit on baseball, softball. They hate it. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. They can avoid it. They want to avoid it. They don't. And want we it. even get creative with swim, um, because there's a certain rule in the pool, and tape won't stay. It won't stick in the water, but power flex will. And before power flex became such a popular thing, I remember showing my age that I used duct tape for swim. <laughs> and duct tape will just mid stays. <laughs> duct tape, you know, is that universal for everything. <laughs> but um, yeah. What's the what's the worst injury that you guys have ever had yourself? Oh, we we've had some rough ones here. I'd say no, 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 like like you personally. I would say one of the roughest ones was a dislocated knee. No, no, I'm talking about like you. Like, what's the worst injury you've you dislocated I, your no, knee? No, I would athlete here. No, no, that's what that's all I'm asking. The worst injury you've had. Listen, I'm gonna show my age because I've had. <laughs> Pretty much. I think that's why I relate so well to what I do. Just being a competitive athlete my whole life, from growing up to high school to college, to just stop competing nationally maybe five years ago with my running and racing and triathlons. I, I don't know. My poor body. <laughs> dislocated elbow, fractured L4, L5, fractured my left ankle, broken fingers. I'd say my the back was probably the the back and probably the 
job at a dislocation in the sound store there. I haven't had a luxury to pay for that. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Kirsten? Uh, I think I was a pretty uh, lucky athlete. I didn't really have, like, I can only think of about three injuries. And the worst one I would say I had was a torn hip flexor, which doesn't compare anything to hers, but <laughs> I played hard. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, well. Thank you both for joining us. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks for all your hard work as athletic trainers. I'm sure all the athletes appreciate it, and we appreciate all that you do. Well, thank thank you, you guys. We appreciate all you guys do, too. Absolutely. Yep. Except in the nick of time, when we go in the office, we've got a power outage. <laughs> 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 Although, in the nick of time, it's not a power outage. <laughs>